Hi guys! From the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you for helping me reach over 500 subscribers. I'm going to be really honest with you, um, when I started this channel, reaching 500 subscribers was like my main goal. Why 500? I have no idea. I thought it was a nice round number, I guess. Anyways, that's not the point. The point is, is that I achieved this goal with your support. As always, some special shout outs to Trick, to Doom Noodle, to Wixley, to Soulsborn Seeker this time as well, um, to Farron, Nathaniel, Mugen Lord, Mr. O Mr. OPZ or Mr. Ops, Gabriel, Jace G, Ridley Rage, and so many others. I also would like to use this video for a small update. I'm going to take a short break because I'm going on a holiday for almost a week and there's also just a lot going on in my life right now and some good things and I guess some bad things as well. For example, I'm trying to find a new place and move out as soon as possible but it's not going as smoothly as I hoped so it takes some time and, um, and energy. Anyways, as a thank you, I would like to review my favorite Metroidvania game ever. And maybe even my favorite indie game of all time. And that would be Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. The main game is great also, but the Definitive Edition added a few more areas, a bit more lore and some new abilities as well. So you can't go wrong with that. Alright, enough talk for now. Thanks again. And you don't know how much this means to me and how it has changed my life. Enjoy the review. Bye bye. Ori in the Blind Forest is a game that is so special to me because I have so many memories connected to it and it made me fall in love with indie games. This game made me realize how amazing and passionate indie games can be. And it's basically the reason why I started to review games and would like to do this the rest of my life. I played this game during a very difficult period in my life. It was a great way to escape reality and focus on something beautiful. Everything about this game feels right to me. The subtle story, the gorgeous visuals, the smooth and fun gameplay, the interesting forest setting that never gets dull because of all the different biomes, the fair difficulty curve and not to forget the beautiful soundtrack. This game also introduced me to the metroidvania genre and how backtracking is a thing. Of course I have played Super Metroid and some Castlevania games since, but Ori and the Blind Forest will always be the game I think about when people mention the word metroidvania or when I would like to introduce them to the genre. The sequel is pretty great as well, so I also highly recommend to play that one. But this one will always have a special place in my heart. After a very emotional opening and just great storytelling in general, it's basically up to you to recover the three elements water, air and fire. So you can rekindle the power of the spirit tree and save the forest. The villain in this story is Kuro, a giant owl that has her own reasons why she is trying to stop you. And her backstory is just like the rest of the story, simple but effective. There is a bit of narration here and there, but the story is basically presented to you through the power of animation. I always appreciate it when a story is being shown instead of being told especially in metroidvanias, or just action platformers in general. I always say, less is more, and this game is a great example of that. There are a few things why the gameplay is so special and memorable in my opinion. The first one is the ability to place your own checkpoints. This is such a clever design choice, 
because it makes exploring this world a lot more accessible and less stressful. You can just create a save point if an upcoming obstacle scares you. But don't forget to create new ones, because the game only saves by itself after key moments. It would be a real shame if you die and you realize too late you haven't put down a save point for a while. And now you need to do everything all over again. It asks a lot of responsibility from the player and I really like that. The second one is just the core gameplay and how skilled and mobile you will become at the end of the game. There is nothing greater than being able to go from point A to point B in 10 seconds, when earlier it took you almost a minute. I know this is nothing new for Metroidvania, but there aren't that many that do it in such a balanced way. You always get an ability at the right time, and they always add something fun and exciting to the overall gameplay. And when you had the time to get used to them, a challenge will be waiting ahead that is going to be a great test of your skills. I love this kind of level progression. It feels fair and also rewarding. And with the aid of your simple but effective ability tree, it becomes even more enjoyable. The third one is the addition of these instant death sequences. They are basically just trial and error sections. But it's all about the overall presentation and how the game challenges you to play flawlessly. Overcoming these challenges is very memorable and super satisfying. And they are for sure my favorite moments. I'm always getting excited when I know they are coming up. And even when I die at the last obstacle and I have to do it all over again, I never get frustrated. Because I get to experience the great and fast paced level design once more. These sequences are for sure giant difficulty spikes. But I see them as this game's boss fights. So they are supposed to be challenging. The only aspect that is a bit lackluster is the combat. It's just spamming one button especially in the beginning, but thankfully some new abilities make it more exciting and more diverse. I can look past the generic combat though, because this game is heavily focused on movement and platforming. And the combat is most of the time just used to gain optional experience. There are only a handful of moments with scripted fights. The definitive edition adds these new areas that are skippable and I think that's another clever design choice because it gives the player more options on how to complete the game. Exploring these areas will give you even more fun abilities that will make the gameplay easier and even more exciting and it also introduces you to a few new mechanics while at the same time giving you more backstory about certain characters in the game. More content to an already great game is a win-win situation in my book. So in general, Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition is just a flawless game. You can't go wrong with the normal version, but the definitive edition is basically just the same game but with more side content. I admit, I'm a bit biased when it comes to this game. So if you don't agree with me, then that's totally fine. I simply love this game and I can't forget how it influenced my life and helped me cope with the situation I was in. If you haven't played this game yet, Please do yourself a favor and go play it. Hopefully you are going to love it as well. And if you don't, well, at least you were accompanied by one of the best soundtracks in gaming history, in my opinion. So be ready to rekindle the power of the spirit tree and experience a story of sacrifice and hope.
that is going to captivate you from start to finish. 